Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. The video camera is running. Oh my God! Nine one one emergency. Give me an ambulance out here. What you're about to see in the next 60 minutes is real. Real cops, real crooks, real cases. Everything from state-of-the-art training to terrifying shootouts. The most reckless criminals, the most bizarre and unusual crimes ever captured on tape. From high-speed chases to robberies in progress. From impossible rescues to insane crimes of passion. We've gathered this amazing video from departments all over the world. Much of it has never been seen outside the law enforcement community. What you see may shock you, frighten you, anger you. But we bring it to you for one reason. Because knowledge is power. A power that could save your life. I'm Sheriff John Bunnell. Police officers spend countless hours training for one single moment. In the next hour, we're going to show you what happens when police officers have to put that training to the test. So you better hang on, because there's nothing like the real thing. Glacier County, Montana. Police pursue a DUI suspect. The man is a Blackfoot Native American, headed home to his reservation. He's trying to make it back to the road. He believes that if he can make it, the police won't be able to apprehend him there. The police have chased this man before, but never like this. Tonight, he's so reckless, officers try to box him in with a rolling roadblock maneuver. But he evades them by suddenly swinging to the left. Trying to get back on the road, he recklessly sideswipes an unmarked police car. The truck ricochets off. The man attempts to regain control, but the truck skids a 180, colliding head on with this police car. Seconds later, an officer runs out with his service revolver aimed at the out of control driver. What happens next is unbelievable. The man races toward the officer, but a split second before he can get there, a police vehicle rams the truck off course, saving the officer's life. As the truck is pushed onto the shoulder, officers aim their weapons, preparing for anything. On its last legs, the truck suddenly sputters back onto the road. An officer rushes to the door and finds a passenger, a terrified girlfriend. But this man isn't finished running. He slams into reverse, but he gets stuck. A cop jumps into the front seat and cuts the engine off. With the help of other officers, he pulls the struggling drunk out of the truck. He's quickly cuffed and arrested. This man thought he'd be home free if he made it back to his reservation. As it turned out, he was convicted on charges in both the state court and his tribal court. ATMs offer quick cash 24 hours a day, but they can also be a magnet for criminals who don't need one of these to get what they want. Louisiana, 3 a.m. Without warning, a stolen truck barrels through the front doors. The terrified clerk runs for cover. While the clerk is calling police, the driver begins a frantic search for the cash machine. He drags the ATM by its power cord. He nearly has it out of the store when the cord snaps and sends him toppling backwards. But this crook is determined. He manages to tip the machine end over end and out of the store. Police found the empty machine the next day, along with the stolen truck. But the suspect forgot one thing. Weekend customers had wiped out the ATM's cash supply. What did he get for his haul? A mere $40. In Arlington, Texas, a pickup truck backs into this closed gas station. Seconds later, a gang of teenagers storm through the window. Wearing hoods and packing bolt cutters, 
they wrap an industrial strength chain around the machine. With the other end attached to the pickup, the driver guns it. The machine flies free and right into a suspect, nearly snapping the bones in both legs. Incredibly, the injured robber staggers to his feet and climbs out the window. The gang made off with over $6,000. But after seeing this wipeout, cops knew the man would need medical attention. When police alerted local emergency rooms, the suspect was arrested the following day. Thanks to a simple video camera and some heads up police work, these crash and carry bandits will be doing time in federal prison. Cedar City, Utah. This driver has been pulled over for stealing a pickup. The man is also an ex-con, only six weeks out of jail, and he'll do anything to keep from going back. Cedar 89 or 1080, get some help started. Down the highway, two vehicles block his path. The suspect veers off-road. Oh, geez, he just passed a car that was in the left lane, almost lost it. Later, the driver passes traffic on the other side. He's passing again in the emergency lane. Oh, my gosh, he just got the rear end of the truck. He has to be stopped now, before this chase enters the Virgin River Gorge, a dangerous stretch of Canyon Road. Hey, up on the spike right now. Spike strips are deployed. All four tires blow. They disintegrate all over the road. The driver fights to control the zigzagging truck. Incredibly, he's still able to lead the cops another 30 minutes into Arizona on bare rims, right toward the gorge. Over the border, Arizona troopers move in to help stop him. The Arizona car is primary at this point. But the suspect is relentless. The officer's fears are soon realized. The pursuit enters the gorge. Its steep grade and twisting road make it dangerous to navigate, especially with no tires at 70 miles an hour. To make matters worse, they're rapidly approaching a loaded gas tanker. We're too close to that truck to try anything right now. One bad skitter spark, and the road could become an inferno. The truck ain't going over this time. Incredibly, the pickup holds the road. They all make it through the gauntlet. But now it's time to take off the gloves. Unmarked police trucks race up. Peter, we're going to attempt to ram him. Pair the other vehicle to open the bus. I copy that'll be at my post truck. Now that they're safely out of the gorge, one of the trucks moves in and rams the pickup. Okay, he's been fitted. One tap at this speed, and it's all over. The suspect gives up as cops from two states surround him. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! This maniac driver led police on an 80-mile rampage, most of it without tires, some of it in treacherous territory. But with the teamwork of two police forces, this ex-con finally got knocked off the road and sent back to jail. Give me some cops. Coming up. Oh, I'm not up here. On World's Wildest Police Video. I smell marijuana. This is where the training gets put to the test. Where angry farm workers <laughs> refuse to back down. Don't let it get out of control. Where hopped up British teens wreak havoc in the streets. Adrenaline-driven action. Mind-blowing moments. Hard-hitting cop. Next. The chase is on. Down back roads in Mississippi. Up narrow streets in London. Through hairpin turns in Utah. This is where it starts. And this is where it ends. When teenagers run from the law, they may think they're just playing a game, but they're not. It's a serious crime, one that can land a young person in jail, in the hospital, or much, much worse. Weber County, Utah. A deputy pulls over three teenagers in a stolen white hatchback. Since the car belongs to the grandmother of one of the boys, these joyriding juveniles probably aren't facing criminal charges. 
but they foolishly decide to run anyway. None of the suspects is over 15, and it shows. They stall the car. But once they get going again, these reckless kids run like hardened criminals. The young runaways probably think it's pretty cool. They're in a stolen car, tossing cigarettes out the window at cops who are in hot pursuit. But the police have seen too many tragedies begin this way. The team behind the wheel is only barely holding the road. When the chase winds toward a dead end, the cops think it's over. But the teenage driver doesn't slow down. And when he runs out of road, the kid panics. The stolen car charges grill first right into a guardrail. Without seatbelts on, the teens are slammed forward. When the police pull up, they can see the boys are in pain. The cops are now only concerned with the young men's safety. Two of the boys are able to walk away from the wreck with only cuts and bruises. But their friend in the back seat has spinal injuries. He can't walk away at all. With this one reckless act, these kids prove it's never too early to ruin your life. And while young offenders like these rarely do hard time, a broken back carries a life sentence. A peaceful demonstration starts to turn ugly. These farm workers say union labor is taking their jobs. Now they've come to protest against the union and its workers. We do not want to go union, so we'd rather just break this company than have it go union. The union is no good. Organizers try to keep the demonstration peaceful. But fighting breaks out as some protesters try to force union workers from the field. A lone sheriff's deputy responds, expecting only a minor disturbance. She quickly has to call for backup. The violence escalates. Moments later, Watsonville police arrive. Together with sheriff's deputies, they persuade protesters to leave the field. The demonstration appears to be over, when suddenly, the crowd spots the president of the company. He came to inspect the damage to the fields, but now he's surrounded by a mob of angry employees. Police try to clear a path for the truck, but demonstrators resist. More cops move in. They begin to push the crowd out of the way. Demonstrators fight back, throwing crates and boxes in the truck's path. Police keep their cool in the face of mounting anger, but when a demonstrator attacks a cop, deputies take him down. The mob rushes to help their friend. Police are forced to use pepper spray to keep them back. And when deputies take the suspect into custody, the crowd focuses all their anger at the police. Experienced cops try to keep the crowd under control. He's all right, it's all right. Don't let it get out of control. In an effort to restore order, cops decide to pull back to a safe distance. Workers hurl rocks and dirt at retreating police. But the gamble pays off. The crowd slowly goes home, and police avoid further conflict. Officers are used to riots on city streets. But no matter where they occur, there will always be the cop caught in the middle whose only job is to bring order to chaos. Birmingham, England. Police hightail it after two teenage joyriders in a stolen car. Winding roads and high speeds can be a deadly duel, especially with a young driver at the wheel. Again. The driver tears up the road recklessly. 
Not even a close call with another car or a bus 10 times his size will slow him down. He won't stop for red lights. He won't stop for pedestrians. He just won't stop, even though he may kill himself or someone else. High speeds make it hard for the inexperienced driver to hold the road. The cops have to end this threat before this ride becomes his last. The suspects head right into a police roadblock. They slow down. The cops are ready to pounce. But the driver isn't ready to give up. The police stick with him. More cops join the pursuit. The driver sees two police cars coming at him. He panicked, and it happens. The teens slam into a stalled car and ricochet off another. Their joyride spares their lives, but costs them their freedom. They learn too late that a quick thrill in a stolen car just isn't worth it. Avon, Ohio. Like a bat out of hell, a thief in a stolen car heads for the highway. An officer's on his tail in seconds. The car thief pushes the engine all the way to the red line. Just past the county line, still pursuit. Speed's not at 100 miles an hour. He treats this simple family car as if it were a high-performance racing vehicle. He cuts through traffic as if the Interstate 90 were the Indy 500. Give an update. He thinks he can escape by taking the shoulder, but he can't outwit the semi. The sheer size of the big rig forces him off the road and hubcaps go flying, straight toward the patrol car. All the officer can do is hold the road and take the hit. Then he commits his ultimate act of stupidity. The posted off-ramp speed is 35, but he hits the curve doing more than 70. Even the drivers in a demolition derby would never try anything like this. Just be advised he's out on the exit ramp. Hold it! Caught moments later, the thief was charged with grand theft auto and reckless endangerment. A fitting end for a speed demon who tried to turn the family car into a Formula One and a freeway into the concourse at Daytona. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos. High stakes holdups. Start with crooks packing heat. A high pressure meeting ends in all out chaos. A high octane pursuit runs breakneck through the bayou. We'll take you where the action's hot, the danger's real, and the video's wild. A Mississippi miner causes major problems. A hot-headed councilman loses his cool and punks with pistols meet their match. Don't move! For a cop, it's just a day on the job. Everybody's faster. When a suspect in a pursuit has no concern for human life, even their own, you have to hope that something stops them before someone ends up in the hospital, or worse. The crack of dawn, Tupelo, Mississippi. After refusing to pull over for a traffic stop, this driver races his rusted out Pontiac through the morning fog. The suspect pushes the old car to the limit, roaring across asphalt at ridiculous speeds. A police unit charges onto the highway and gets ahead of the suspect. Blocked in from the front and the rear, the reckless driver has no open road to work with. So he veers off the road. The officer goes right after him, rumbling across the median at strut-busting speeds. But when the suspect reaches smooth pavement, Again, he speeds off in the wrong direction. The man hurtles blindly through the bayou fog, 
showing no signs of common sense. Without his headlights on, he's practically inviting a head-on disaster. The officers have to back off. It's just too dangerous. Police units follow from across the median, watching as their worst nightmare comes true. The suspect rockets right into the path of an oncoming car. Amazingly, they miss each other, only inches apart at a combined speed of 140 miles per hour. The suspect then races down an on-ramp, forcing the police to charge over the median again to stay in pursuit. The officer has to tear around corners and gun his cruiser's engine to keep the car in sight. With every fast turn, the officer gets closer to his target. The driver pushes his car's worn out engine to the limit. Trailing a cloud of white smoke, all the suspect can do is pull off the road and run on foot. They catch their fugitive in the foggy woods and bring him back in cuffs. And who was this mad suspect who risked so many lives? A 16-year-old kid who ran because he didn't have a license. In my 27 years of law enforcement, I've never seen a crook get it quite right. Some come close, but in the end, they all make that one mistake. Forsyth, Georgia. The man wearing the cap will soon be armed and dangerous. Earlier in the day, he purchased rounds for a Smith & Wesson revolver. Now he examines the same weapon in another gun store. The clerk turns his attention to the calculator. The man slips his hand into his pocket. It takes him only a moment to load one round. The clerk tries to stop him, but it's too late. The man has made the jump from casual shopper to armed robber. The robber is smooth and quick. Although he has time to load only one shot, one shot is all he needs. The crook takes money and more ammunition. He walks out ready to start a one-man crime spree. Fortunately for the clerk, the robber doesn't want to add murder to his rap sheet. As soon as the thief is gone, the clerk hits the alarm. Police arrive moments later, but the robber is vanished for now. Orlando, Florida. A thief enters a store with a cool manner and a colder heart. After knocking the clerk unconscious, the thief steps behind the counter. As customers enter, he waits on them. More patrons enter, and he serves them too. He even answers the phone. The more people he helps, the more money he gets. When the last customer leaves, he gathers up the loot. He collects every penny and doesn't forget the bills under the cash drawer. He walks out as casually as he walked in. Here we are in Golden, Colorado. Closing time. A robber surprises a grocery store manager. Confused, the manager doesn't know which way to turn. The robber turns the confusion to his advantage. He orders the manager back into the office. Police always advise cooperation in a robbery. This manager leads the crook straight to the money. He knows his willingness to cooperate could save his life. It's all right here. Very good. You can check right in there. There's no end to this crook's greed. Right in there. You want to see the bottom? Yep. Two singles and five now. He forces the manager to open the bottom safe as well. Big mistake. The money in the lower safe is loaded with an explosive die capsule. Moments after the crook leaves, the capsule discharges. Covered with dye and captured on video, there's no way he's getting out of this. Each of these criminals thought he'd pulled off the perfect robbery. They each forgot one thing, the video camera. When the criminals were apprehended, the police had all the evidence they needed. Clarkston, Washington. A city council meeting is embroiled in a tense standoff. If you do not let us proceed, we will, uh, I will call you out of order. But he wouldn't let the issue drop, so the police chief stepped in. I'm asking you to leave, and if you don't quiet down and comply with the mayor's orders, you will be escorted out of here. Well, you can try to escort me. 
Mayor? Yes. Okay. Right you take okay. your hands off. If you don't leave, I'm going to arrest you for disorderly conduct. The councilman refused, and the frustrated chief radioed for backup. Should you leave so I guess you don't have to leave? No, not necessarily. I but the councilman wouldn't budge. We've got the authority, on, and you're okay. going to go. It's now come to this. Unstoppable force meets immovable object. The deputy pulls out his pepper spray and warns the councilman. Leave or I'm going to spray you. When things start to get physical, the deputy is forced to do his duty. You're under arrest. You're under arrest. The councilman struggles. The deputy pepper sprays him. He misses and hits the wall. But the second blast hits the mark. The man flails about wildly. Before he can hurt himself or anyone else, the deputy takes him down. The chief moves in with handcuffs. Uh, this meeting will be adjourned for a little bit here. Let the officers Please. do their job. A moment later, the councilman is escorted past the shocked onlookers and out of the hall. That night, he's released from jail on bond. He will later receive a settlement from the city for $65,000. This meeting went from out of order spent enough time and that is enough. to out of control. And two cops just doing their duty were forced to take action. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos. A bull's pounding pursuit takes a heart-stopping turn. A routine stop starts a roadside battle. And clueless drunks meet some fearless cops. Real crime, hard time, next. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. The wild ways of criminals. They try to argue. Don't you know how they jump? They try to run. They even try to fight. But try as they might, their wild days are numbered. No cop wants to take a life. However, a police officer will use deadly force in order to save innocent lives. What you are about to see is disturbing and intense. Discretion is advised. Stafford County, Virginia. Three deputies are in pursuit of a desperate suspect. The man inside the car is wanted for brandishing a handgun at a local store. Be advised, suspect is armed. So as he wildly dodges through a parking lot and roars over a sidewalk back onto the street, the deputies know they're faced with more than a reckless driver. They're dealing with an armed suspect who may be willing to kill. Their first order of business is to get him off the road. But the suspect unexpectedly takes care of that himself. He leads the officers into a dead end. It's possible he's pulling over to surrender. But when officers are dealing with an armed suspect who isn't acting rationally, they have to assume the worst. The deputies order the man to throw his gun out the window. Instead, the suspect gets out and takes aim at the nearest officer. He's openly forcing the cops into a deadly shootout. From another angle, it's clear the officers have no time for decisions. They can only react. The suspect falls in the hail of gunfire, and the deputies move in. The officers approach with caution, even though the man is down. They call for paramedics. Medevac chopper in route. Unbelievably, the suspect has no regrets about forcing the officers to shoot. These deputies couldn't know the kind of man they were dealing with. But at the moment of truth, these officers did their duty. They did what they had to do to stay alive. In Alexandria, Louisiana, this DUI suspect doesn't seem a bit worried. If I had anything to eat, I'm gonna eat all day. In fact, he doesn't even seem to know why he's there. I ain't been arrested, nobody told me I've been arrested. Well, that's what they put the handcuffs on you and put you in the car for. 
and the right toe in the victim. Yeah, that, that usually means you're arrested. Uh oh. The officers get the suspect to take a sobriety test. Okay, we're going to back with some 26 to 9. I don't know if I can do that. You can't do that either. I don't know if I can do it. It's a simple task, but the friendly man barely gets through it. 16. 15. Right? Yep. Things get even sillier when he's asked to walk a straight line. Left this foot. is my left over here. Put your left foot on, on the right. On the right. Oh, this is still my left foot. <laughs> <laughs> and the balancing act begins. Man, I got a wobble in that thing. I got a shake. Then I got to take two. I got a shake. Taking a drunk test isn't meant to be fun, but no one has told that to the man with the 10 gallon hat and a 40 ounce habit. That's four. Then that's five. And you got a shake. And when he finally gets to the end, he's ready to do it again, two-step style. All in all, this guy is a pretty fun drunk, but there's nothing funny about drinking and driving. So this guy is headed for the drunk tank. You'd think getting arrested for DUI and losing your license would sober a person up, but some people just end up making it worse for themselves and anyone within shouting distance. Tupelo, Mississippi. The seated officer is trying to process a female DUI. I will see that you don't have a job as pig feeder. The officers try to ignore her, but it becomes impossible. Even when they put her in cuffs, this woman keeps making things worse. That's all the hell you are, pig faced bastard! Insulting a cop is no way to get on his good side. You pig faced bastard. And doing it twice is just plain stupid. Maybe she'll learn some manners behind bars. Concord, New Hampshire. A state trooper pulls over a teenager driving with no lights on. How you doing? State police, see license registration, please? One whiff tells him this kid is drunk. You have nothing. You have no registration, no license. You're driving around with no lights on. The roadside test confirms the officer's suspicion. They're placing you under arrest for driving while intoxicated. Why don't you put your hands behind your back? This young man wants to do things the hard way. He makes a break for it. Put your... A face full of pepper spray will stop most men, but this drunk teen barely reacts. With nothing else working, the trooper has to use brute strength. It's rough, but the cop will not risk letting a drunk driver get back on the road. Give me some cops. Some people call alcohol liquid courage, but in this case, it's liquid stupidity. You're under arrest, DWI. Drunks. Sometimes they swagger, and sometimes they stagger. Come on now, stand up. They break up, <laughs> break down, and even try to break away. Cops take them on a case-by-case -case basis. But when a suspect under the influence crosses the line, cops take them down and take them to jail. No Coming up yeah, this guy's out of control. on World's Wildest Police Videos, a rookie cop Don't move. makes a veteran decision. You're going down for this hard, you know that. Suicidal jumpers make a desperate plea. Get back, get back. And a high-speed junkie makes a break from the law. Gear jamming. Punk slamming. Get down on the ground. Auto ram in action. Next. That's a lot of dobo, man. Stop! A cop expects the unexpected. He never knows when it'll happen or where. 519, got one running, 519. Or even how. He just knows it will. I'm gonna go to back. Get down on the ground. Rockwall, Texas. When Deputy Havens pulls over this car for a broken light, he's playing a hunt. Now he's about to find out how accurate his intuition is. How you doing, sir? Yeah, how you? When the driver gets out, the officer gets a whiff of something illegal. 
Is there any marijuana in the car? No, sir. No marijuana in the car? No, sir. I smell marijuana. The deputy gets answers to his questions, but he doesn't believe any of them. Okay. All right. Hang tight. The officer makes a quick call for backup and then talks to the passenger. How you doing, sir? The pungent odor of pot is even stronger on this man. You might want to be in the passenger admits he has a previous drug misdemeanor. Deputy Havens immediately frisks the driver and then his buddy. Again, his cop instincts tell him something is wrong. Nothing fancy, is he? Zip is on down. The man turns defensive. Deputy Havens decides to cuff him. Put your hands behind your head. The man bolts. 519, got one warning, 519. The cop's hot on his heels. Stop! Realizing the deputy's attention is on his partner, the driver rushes to the car, grabs a hidden bag of drugs, and dashes into the bushes. Once the dope is tossed, the driver returns, acting totally innocent. He watches as his buddy gets cuffed. The suspect thinks he's put one over on the deputy. He gets cocky. He gets bored. This drug-ditching crook is so confident, he casually gets a cigarette from the car and lights up. Meanwhile, backup arrives. Havens has the suspect cuffed and tells the others to arrest the driver. I got one by my car up there still. He said there's a bag of weed behind the car somewhere. He threw it, he told me he threw it right. I marked it with his hat, it was down his pants. As the suspect who ran is loaded into the cruiser, it looks like the bust is over. But when Deputy Havens notices the driver smoking right before he's cuffed, it makes him think. When he frisked the man moments earlier, he had no cigarettes on him. The suspect must have gone back to the car. He had at least two minutes where no one was keeping an eye on him. It makes the curious cop wonder what else he did while no one was watching. So Havens rewinds the tape. The camera tells him exactly what happened. I've got a large amount of pasta hair on it. It's packaged in baggies. These drug runners thought they could fool the cops, but Deputy Havens lets them know their plan has failed. Had your rights read to you? You understand your rights? You know you're in trouble. I'm in that's, trouble. That's a whole bunch of hair on that car. That's a lot of dope, my man. A whole bunch of dope. You're going down for this hard, you know that. This ain't no dime bag. Thanks to some textbook police work and a strong hunch, this misdemeanor is now felony drug possession with intent to sell. Let's face it, if you're smart enough to fool the cops, you wouldn't be dumb enough to be a crook. A drunk driver is a ticking time bomb, an accident waiting to happen. As an officer, you're always looking out for these drivers to get them off the road. But sometimes they come off the road looking for you. Tigered, Oregon. This woman has been pulled over for speeding. It's late at night, and the officer wants to make sure she isn't intoxicated. I am not driving under the influence. I okay. had one and a half drinks tonight. Well, that's just, that's what we're going to find out. A second officer is parked on the shoulder, right behind the first police car. Their hazard lights are flashing. I'm going to be on my way to go home and drive okay. my friends home. All right. I have been the designated driver for tonight. The woman is not drunk. The officer is about to let her go. But suddenly, another driver clips the fender of the second police car at 80 miles an hour. There's an explosion of glass, metal, and dirt. The vehicle continues another 500 feet before skidding to a stop. With shards everywhere, the officer's first thought is for the safety of the woman. Get back in your car, get back in your car. Then he rushes to check on the other vehicle. Incredibly, the occupant is unhurt, but that driver is intoxicated with open containers in the car. Big trouble. Every night after 10, nearly one out of 12 people is driving under the influence. I am not driving under the influence. I okay. had one and a half drinks. But even a single cocktail can impair a person's driving. And when you cross the line, the result can be devastating. Greenfield, Indiana. Two officers are in pursuit of a stolen Ford Explorer, but they're not regular officers. They're in the reserves. Officers Bray and Davis have training, but little experience. That's about to change. 
On a back road, the suspect nearly loses control. Stopping him won't be easy. Suddenly, he pulls over. He appears to be giving up, but something doesn't feel quite right. Officer Bray jumps out of the squad car. Bray knew better than to step between the cruiser and the stolen vehicle. His training may have saved his life. Now it's attempted murder. Officer Bray opens fire as the truck speeds away. Seconds later, Bray and Davis are back in the pursuit. Their headlights were destroyed, so Davis uses the spotlight to guide them. Finally, the explorer pulls over again. The suspect gets out and lies on the ground. The officers are ready for more tricks. Don't move! Officer Bray finds that his earlier gunshots wounded the man in the neck. He's too weak to run anymore. These officers survived because of good police training and good instincts. It takes only one experience like this to turn volunteers into veterans. Today, Officer Bray is a full-time member. Stand by, guys. I think he's gonna go with it. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos. Watch it. He's gonna jump. Suicidal suspects. There's the signal. Desperate moments. Grab him. Extraordinary cops. Oh, God. Saving a person intent on suicide is one of the toughest challenges a police officer can face. And believe me, there are times when it seems almost impossible. Sao Paulo, Brazil. On a windowsill high above the streets, a woman is about to jump. A woman eight months pregnant. Friends and police urge her to go inside, but she refuses to listen. The crowd watches breathlessly as rescue units mobilize but the woman is 18 stories high. How do they rescue someone they can't even get near? Sometimes, cops are able to get near a suicide jumper. On a freeway overpass in Omaha, Nebraska, this man is threatening to jump. If successful, he would drop into rush hour traffic below. The cops spend a tense hour trying to talk him off the railing. As one officer works to gain his trust, he slowly inches closer to him. Then suddenly, the officer grabs him. It takes three other cops to keep the struggling man from falling. Luckily, these cops were able to get close enough to grab him. But sometimes, jumpers are too edgy to let anyone close. In a Springfield courthouse, an attempted murder suspect has perched himself on a third floor railing. He threatens to fall if anyone comes near him. And it's a deadly drop to the marble floor below. While a guard distracts the man, a sheriff off screen takes his shoes off and sneaks up behind him. By the time the suspect notices, it's too late. He gets nabbed just as he starts to fall over the edge. The plainclothes sheriff holds on to the man's ankle cuffs, while other officers arrive to help haul him up. But the replay reveals an interesting fact. As the suspect started to fall, he grabbed on to the railing bars. Maybe he wasn't so suicidal after all. Back in Sao Paulo, police have come up with a daring rescue plan. The pregnant woman senses activity on the roof. Then, before she knows what's happening, her rescuers fall from the sky. A replay reveals that the woman fell back into the window, away from the drop. Like the previous case, maybe all she wanted was to be rescued. Sometimes, people attempt suicide without really wanting to die. But cops must always assume they're serious, especially if they have to risk their own lives to save them. This is what it takes to serve. Courage in the line of fire. Cool in the heat of chaos. Everything's all right. Poise in the face of danger. These are the moments they prepare for. Get on the ground! When everything they've learned gets put to the test. 